Welcome to the Jacob Media Halftime Show here from the incredible Ocean Casino and Resort, the Gallery Bar Booking Games. Bill Calarulo joining me, Mark Farzetta, and John McMullen will be joining us from Lincoln Financial Field, where the score is 17 to 10 in favor of your Philadelphia Eagles. As we know, both these teams sit here at 5 and 1. Eagles trying to come out on top with the best record here in the NFL. The good, the bad, and the ugly of the first half. Let's start off with the good. First off, not such a great play call when it came to the first red zone appearance there from the Eagles, but they certainly made it up made up for it, Bill, in their second trip to the red zone with that tight end screen to Jordan Mailata's side of the offensive line to Dallas Goddard. We talked about it in the pregame. If you're going to beat this Dolphins team, you have to score touchdowns in the red zone, something this Eagles offense has struggled with all season long. Not a great first drive, but then they went two of three, well, two for two the rest of the time, not scoring on the first one, but a really good play call. Great play call to Dallas Goddard on that screen. I tweeted it out, actually. A touchdown in the red zone and on a screen pass, two things we haven't seen a lot of this year, so yeah. we'll take it. Uh, a couple of things we needed to see was red zone scoring, obviously, and when, then we needed to see the defense be able to step up, which they did up until the very last possession there in the Miami Dolphins, and as you were, talk, you, were, you were telling me before the half right there, they get the ball right out of halftime as well, so that's a tough uh, situation that the Eagles put themselves in. Yeah, I say it every week. Good teams score points before the end of half, and that's what happened here. First, few, first three drives, defense completely shut out the Dolphins' offense. Final drive, not so much. But we knew this Dolphins team was going to put up points. We've got to just keep it going in the second half. All right, let's get to Lincoln Financial Field, talk to our NFL insider, John McMullen, also the co-host of Birds 365, right here on Jacob Media. John, let's just talk first and foremost about the injuries. What do we know about Fletcher Cox? What do we know about the secondary right now uh, going into halftime? Uh, well, Fletcher came, came out there for a little bit, but he managed to come back in the game. So I think we're fine from that perspective. Obviously, A.J. Brown was in the tent for a little bit. For uh, looked like he was being checked for the first down. And then the first play was back in the uh, – yeah, it came with that up, the Jalen Hurts touchdown. So – uh, he got right back in there, extended the play. Uh, yeah, overall, just uh, a really good ahead by the Eagles until I heard you guys talk at Bill. Uh, that last drive where they gave up a, a third and 18, and, and then obviously Tyree Kill got them in the end. You know, I remember talking in the pregame show with Seth. Occasionally, you want to try to press Tyree Kill at the line of scrimmage you do that at your own um, at your own risk because James Bradbury every kill was and obviously to me it comes down guys when Tua has time I think we lost John, unfortunately. We'll try to check back with him and go back to Lincoln Financial Field a little bit later during the halftime programming here. But, yeah, when you do talk about what was going on with the secondary, it looked like you were able to hit turbo for a guy like Tyreek Hill and be beating not one, not two, but three Eagles defensive backs on that final touchdown. Yeah, and John mentioned it, though. What was most frustrating about that final drive are the two long third-down conversions. Prior to that last drive, the Eagles' defense held Miami to one of four on third down. They let the Dolphins go two of two on third down on that final drive, a third and 18 to Wilson, which is just unacceptable, and then the third and nine touchdown to Tyreek Hill. But it's hard to be mad at this defense. This defense is playing their butts off tonight. Held the, t the best offense in the NFL to only 41 yards before that final drive. A, a team that was averaging over eight yards of play, the first three drives, the Eagles defense held them to 2.9 yards of play. So... You're not going to shut them completely down. we got to be happy with what we saw from this defense. Hopefully they can do more of what they did on the first three drives and not that final drive. And probably the best case example of that was when you saw the fumble by Jalen Hurts. What did the defense do right after that? Defense stepped up and had a play right there. What was it, six plays, one yard? Seven plays, one yard? I think Pretty it was impressive. actually three plays, negative eight yards <laughs> after that fumble holding them to a field goal. That was big. That not, changed the momentum for not, sure. Not too bad. Let's try to go back to Lincoln Financial Field and John McMullen right now. John, what would you like to see from this Eagles team coming out in the second half? Um, well, I think, you know, I, I was kind of talking that whole time because I didn't know you guys lost me. But to me, it's come down to basically when the Eagles get pressure on Tua, they, they dominated 
And basically, when Miami can hold up on the offensive line, the Eagles can't hold up on the back end. So that's sort of the fight, the style of, of matchup you're watching. So to me, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the Eagles' defensive front against the Miami offensive line. If the Dolphins can hold up a little bit better in the second half, I don't know what the Eagles can do with Tyreek Hill, to be honest. Um, but that said, that Eagles front dominated for the vast majority of that first half. And you saw the Dolphins had barely anything offensively until that last drive. They still have negative seven plays Tyreek Hill. They have eight receptions and nine targets when they go to Tyreek Hill. Everybody else, Jalen Waddle has two, but he went out with a back injury. Cedric Wilson and that 20 not reception, which is kind of unforgivable on the third and 18. But it's going to be up to the Eagles' defensive run. On two are in good shape. If don't, uh, hold on for dear life. It just Tyreek kills difficult to deal with. Yeah, John, switching over to the Eagles' offensive side of the ball, Jalen Hurts made some good plays in that first half. We also saw that big mistake on the fumble. But at one point in the first half, it looked like he was a little bit gimpy. I thought maybe he had a lower leg injury, but then he takes off on that great scramble. Is he dealing with any sort of injury to his ankle or his leg? You know, it's funny you said that. I, I did see Jalen kind of limping around the Novacare complex the other day. You know, sometimes you look at it and you say he, he walks kind of slowly in general. Uh, and you say, hey, did I, I, I asked a couple other reporters. They saw the same thing. So he'll never admit it, but I do think he's dealing with a little bit of something. But as you say, you know, when he gets a, a chance to extend plays like he did, with that big 32-yard reception, A.J. Brown on fourth down. <clears throat> he can still do some really, really good things. Um, but I do think he is struggling with a little something uh, with his ankle. But he's fighting through it, and he's playing well. 12 of 15 in that first half for 143 yards. The, the turner was kind of unforgivable. He felt the pressure coming and realized it wasn't there tried to extend the play, but didn't have ball, good ball security. So um, they'll clean that up. But uh, overall, I think he played a really good first half. And, and the Eagles dominated for most of the first half until that last drive. And that's how quick the Dolphins can get you with Tyreek Hill. Absolutely. You mentioned pressure there, as it was in Jalen Hurts' face. But what about the pressure the Eagles are able to provide on Tua Tagovailoa tonight? I can't think of a better time to have a guy like Hassan Reddick be getting hot than the, going into this game against the Dolphins. And then also Nolan Smith being able to get his first career sack in this game as well. What have you seen and what have you liked from the Eagles' pressure so far throughout that first half? Yeah, I mean, the vast majority of it, the Dolphins' offensive line, and they lost Isaiah Wynn as well. So they were banged up to begin with. Connor Williams not playing. Uh, so they're up against it. Um, it's not the strength of their team to begin with. Early in the game, as you mentioned, was Hassan Reddick. They, they couldn't block Hassan Reddick early. You mentioned Nolan Smith. I'd like to say they couldn't block him, but he was unblocked to get his first NFL sack. They're not all going to be that easy for him, but it was nice to see him. And Josh Sweat dominating as well. That Eagles front for the vast majority of that first half had Tua looking really, really bad. Uh, and it came down to that last drive where a little bit of tempo, and you see that the Eagles do that to the other teams. When you go tempo, maybe the defensive line gets a little bit tired, a little bit late, and, and that to me is going to be the story of the second half. Who holds up? Can the, deep, can the Miami offensive front block the Eagles' defensive front? For the majority of the first half, they couldn't. If that continues, I think the Eagles win the game. Gotcha. John McMullen joining us, co-host of Birds 365, right here on the Jacob Media Sports Channel, as well as our NFL insider here at Jacob Media. John, thanks so much. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll be joining John once again in the uh, post-game portion with Mike Misnelli, Seth Joyner, and Derek Gunn as well. All right, so I asked him the question. I'll ask you the same question here, Bill. When it comes to the second half of play, what do you need to see from this Eagles offense and defense to make sure they close out a victory? Well, the Eagles' defense really just needs to do more of what they did on the first three drives, completely shut down the run. But don't forget, this Miami Dolphins' de offense is the number one rushing offense in the NFL. The Eagles' defense held them to negative seven yards. 
If they can shut down that run, it makes it really difficult to, for them to run play action. So defense has to shut down the run, but they can't give up the long third down plays. And I expect more of the same from the offense. Long drives. Keep this high-powered Dolphins offense on the sidelines. One of the best things I saw in the first half was when the camera panned to Tyreek Hill, and he's sitting on the bench. That's what we want to see. Keep Tyreek Hill on that sidelines. So long drives by the offense, and you have to convert in the red zone like they did the last two times. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that, but I'll also add this to it. you got to continue to use DeAndre Swift. I don't know why you're seeing a third and one situation and Kenny Gainwell come into the game when on that particular possession you didn't even see DeAndre Swift touch the ball yet. Just keep feeding the hot hand. If this is actually going to be what the Eagles said it was going to be during the season, if there's going to be any impersonation of a running back by committee, no matter what, you're still going to have to ride the hot hand. That hot hand has been DeAndre Swift since they started giving him the football regularly. So maybe do that a little bit more in the second half as well. Continue to ride that. And then Dallas Goddard. You see Dallas Goddard in their first possession as they march down the field to get into the red zone. Then they call those three awful plays. Whether or not Jalen Hurts checked to himself on the quarterback draw, we don't know yet. But bottom line, those are the plays they ran. Dallas Goddard had 44 receiving yards on back-to-back -back plays right there. 22 and 22. Got him into the red zone, and then you didn't see him again for the rest of that drive. They go right back to him in the second possession. And what do you know? They found the end zone. Go figure. So I'd like to see a lot more of that as well, especially if your run game isn't getting you there. Uh, to get closer to those first down. Find a guy like Dallas Goddard to make sure you get that first down. Also, hat tip Julio Jones. Congratulations on your first catch as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. And also, Jalen Hurts on that rushing touchdown. How about this? On a night where the Eagles are wearing Kelly Green, what better name to throw back to, other than Seth Joyner, of course, than Randall Cunningham. Ties Randall Cunningham for 32. That's 32 rushing touchdowns as a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. A new franchise record. Not yeah too bad. All right, we'll be back with you guys for the post-game show when we're joined by our friends Seth Joyner, Derek Gunn, and Mike Mincinelli, as well as Kayla Santiago. Until then, go Birds in the second half. Hooters, the perfect pair. Staffing is not easy, but that's what we do every day, all day. The key to our success is storytelling, asking the right questions to find the right people. I'm Gary Kane, president of Kane Partners. We want to be your staffing partner. Some say courage is something you're born with. Others say courage is something you find. In every generation throughout history, courage has been celebrated, sought after, needed. It holds the potential for a life of impact. But what if courage isn't just something you hope for or stumble upon? What if courage is something that can be shaped at a place that inspires you, where leaders invest in you, your community believes in you, 
and your life becomes something bigger than it could ever be alone. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles.